Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We have a returning guest today. My buddy Way is back at Timmy the Tool Man Studios for another job. Hey everyone. Basically, we're gonna do a whole e-locker swap on his vehicle. We have to put another differential on the front that has 430 gearing, and then we're gonna put the e-locker in the rear of his truck. Big job. Way being the smart guy that he is, he has figured out how to bench test the e-locker so you can confirm that it's actually working before you go through all the labor to put it in your vehicle. So what Way is gonna do for you is he's gonna show how he set up the wiring to where he could check to see that the e-locker actuates and deactivates, letting him know that, okay, this e-locker is working and I could safely put it in my vehicle and not be wasting my time putting the locker in that doesn't work. So I'm gonna turn it over to Way, and now he's gonna describe how he set everything up and describe to you with the wiring diagram that we actually used in the video we made for an e-locker swap for my buddy Sage. If you click on the link above, you'll be able to see that video, how we did everything. So th this video and the video we already made would work together to give you more information to make this e-locker swap work for you. So I'll explain the different parts of the wiring to get the actuator working. So starting from this switch that comes out of the actuator, there are six wires. Five of them go to the ECU, and one of them, which is actually just the ground of the two wires right here, the two white with black stripe wires, those are two ground wires that you can splice together, and that just needs to be grounded to something. So as you can see, the two wires that are grounded I've put a ground wire and this goes directly to this bench test battery that I have going to the negative. Then the remaining five wires that you see here, those go directly through this wiring harness that hopefully you've pulled all together. The five wires will then plug into the ECU. There are two wires that come out of the ECU that you need to ground. There is this blue one and this white with black stripe these I've put together and as a ground and that's following this wiring diagram for the ECU you can see the number eight is the blue one that's being grounded out and then there's the number seven also that's the white with black stripe and that's also being grounded out on the e-locker switch itself there are four wires in total the two wires on the outside are the ones that actually engage or actuate the actuator, the locker. The two in the middle are just for the light to display on when you've pressed it. So to wire this e-locker switch to do the test, you need to first wire the two wires that are coming out from the very top and the very bottom. The top wire is the green and yellow one, which is the number two wire on this diagram. And you can see the wire will go from the green and yellow and it goes to the number four position on the ECU which is what I did in my ECU. So the bottom wire, the number five wire, is the black and yellow wire with the yellow stripe. On the wire diagram, this wire gets power from the 10 amp turn fuse tap and it's also connected to the ECU to the number five wire on the black ECU. So this is where I'll show you how I did it. So this is the number five black with the yellow stripe wire. Connects to the ECU of the black and yellow. And there's also getting a power source from the bench top battery, the positive 12 volt. So once everything's wired correctly, when you depress the e-locker switch, you should see the actuator engage, which will show it pushing in. And then when you release the button or the switch, you should see the actuator come out. All right, here's my attempt to clean this up for you so you fully understand which wires on your wiring harness you need to ground and which wires you need to give power to so you can bench test your e-locker rear end before you put it into your vehicle. The first plug that Wade talks about is the plug near the differential, this one right here in the wiring schematic. The two wires that come out of the plug 
that need to be grounded are the number eight pin and the number four pin. They're marked as a white wire with a black stripe. So if you follow the wires in the diagram, the number eight wire goes up here, makes a U-turn and goes down to the bottom of the page. The number four wire goes down to the bottom of the page also and meets up here. And then they show this wire that's labeled as number seven pin coming out of the female plug to the ECU. That's also a white wire with a black stripe and that's going down and splicing together with those two wires from the plug near the differential. And then those wires are going to the ground, which way connected to the negative post on the battery he was using to test the rear end. The wiring diagram shows two other pins that are grounded out on the ECU plug, the number eight pin and the number 10 pin. When we made the video with Sage for the e-locker swap, the reasons for these being grounded out are as follows. The blue wire with the red stripe is grounded out so you can defeat the system so you can engage the locker in two wheel drive or four high. Normally you could only engage the locker in four low. So that's what grounding out that wire does for you. You can engage it whenever you want. The number 10 pin, which is a green wire with the yellow stripe, when you ground that out, that defeats the safety feature which only allows you to engage the locker when you're going five miles per hour or less. So that's what that does. For the purposes of the bench test, Wei found out that he did have to ground the number eight pin, but he did not have to ground out the number 10 pin. On this female plug of the ECU, the two pins that you need to ground out so you can make this bench test work is the number seven pin that joined up with the other ground wires from the plug coming from the differential and the number eight pin that allows you to engage the locker in two wheel drive or four high. This one, you don't have to ground out for the test. It's not necessary. So that's everything on the bottom of this wiring diagram. Now let's go upward and show you the other things that we have to do. This is a diagram of the switch. The two wires that Wei talked about that you have to pay attention to, to to make the bench test work is the number two pin and the number five pin. Following the number two pin, it's a green wire with a yellow stripe and it goes down here and that connects up to the number four pin wire on the female plug to the ECU. The other wire that we have to do something with on the switch is the number five pin. That's labeled as a black wire with a yellow stripe. And in the wiring diagram, they show it getting power from the 10 amp turn fuse tap. What's taking place of this is the positive post on the battery that Way brought to do the test. So just pretend that this is the positive post to the battery that he's using for the test. And the other thing that's getting power, if we follow, they show it spliced in here. If you follow it down, It's going to the number five pin on the female plug of the ECU. So that also needs power too. For the purposes of this test, you don't have to mess with the number three and the number four pins on the e-locker switch because those are just for the lighting function. You don't have to mess with those for the test. These are just so if you want the button to light up when you push the button, that's all these are gonna be for in the wiring diagram. Another wire that you don't have to mess with for the purposes of this test is this one right here. All this is for is just so when you push the button and your rear locker engages, the light on your dash lights up. So this female repair terminal is not necessary for you to bench test your e-locker. So I hope this cleared things up for you to let you know which wires on the wiring harness you have to ground and which wires you have to give power to. After you've analyzed this wiring schematic, you'll start to realize that it's not as complicated as you think it is. You just have to build the harness like they show in this wiring schematic, getting all the wires connected correctly and then giving power to the ones that need power and grounding the ones that need to be grounded and having a power source like a 12 volt car battery 
and then you can perform the test like Wei did. You have to have everything wired up with the factory plugs. Everything's connected to the e-locker actuator going forward to the wiring bracket that hooks up to the driver's side rear shock tower goes forward and connects up to the ECU and then connects up to the switch. You have to have power to the ECU and you have to have power to the switch using some type of battery that you have and then you have to have it grounded so it works. And then you push the button if you see the e-locker actuator go out and go back in you know what's working. If you're still confused, go ahead and ask a question. We'll answer it to the best of our ability. But you will have access to this wiring diagram from the video we made with Sage for the e-locker swap. Analyze this really well and then hopefully it will start to make sense of what you actually have to wire up to bench test the e-locker so you make sure it works. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and special returning guest, Wei. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye.